everyone and welcome to another episode of epic loot radio brian and kirk here bringing in a round table we got mark joining us again and for the first time on the show kenneth fox welcome and we're gonna go around let everybody give uh kind of some pr promotions and some plugs but first kirk what are we talking about today because we got a we got a jam-packed show yeah man it's the uh it's like game armageddon on friday we got three games releasing dragon's dogma 2 rise of the ronin and the one that really matters, right, Mark? Princess Peach Showtime. <laughs> Those yep. are three yep. games we're getting yep. uh, on Friday. We're not talking about Alone in the Dark, but that's also this week. We got a jam-packed week, and uh, we're gonna talk about a little, little, little card roguelike that uh, Ken and I can't put down called Balatro. Maybe we can get one of you two hooked on it. Probably not with your dad life and everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna go over some some of what we've been playing, but mo mainly going over those three games and ken has been hands-on with rise of the rona so you can get your hands-on impressions here first ladies and gentlemen and that's going to be our show all right so stick well, let's around kick, yeah, stick around we got a big one for you and it's starting <laughs> right now uh <laughs> kenneth uh so obviously you've had hands-on with rise of the ronin so i'd like it if you could take a, a moment since especially the your first appearance on the podcast who are you what do you do and then if we can just jump right into the rise of the ronin impressions Cool. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, my name is Kenneth Fox. Uh, I'm a journalist here in Ireland. Uh, so I write for a website called breakingnews.e. So you might be wondering what does that have to do with games? Uh, so yeah, it's just a general, you know, current affairs, news and entertainment, but the past kind of two, three years, I've started to cover the gaming industry in Ireland itself because it's kind of a unique industry. There's like EA here and Riot, but also some indie um, studios as well. And then more recently, I've started doing about two, three years, started to do uh, kind of game reviews as well, because I kind of, you know, got onto different contacts about uh, game reviews. So, yeah, I've been going really well, really enjoying it. And kind of like it's great to be able to cover the biggest releases of the year. And I think in general, like the US is probably ahead uh, in terms of Ireland, in terms of the perception of video games and gaming media. You know, it's a much, much smaller pool here in terms of who's covering games. So it's kind of trying to make it a bit of a niche, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, my latest review was Rebirth. Uh, I nice. reviewed that recently. Don't, and... don't spoil Brian. He's trying to avoid yeah, this. I'm working <laughs> on a remake right no, now. I'm so, I'm, 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 I am four years behind I, on that I, grain. I'm the same. I'm the same with Rebirth. I, I like I got a certain way through and Rise of the Ronin came. So I had to, you know, so, uh, put it to a side, put it aside for a moment. But um, yeah, I don't want anything spoiled. <laughs> people, man, people, someone was given out of at the ending the other day. Thankfully, I didn't see what the detail was, but it's like, Guys, the game just came out like at the end of last well, month. Well, they think Stop. it's fine because exactly. Final, like, Final Fantasy VII's so old. How do you not know? Like <laughs> it's been out for like That's you know the, the remake. <laughs> I was like, this is different. Like, mm -hmm. wait, what's going on here? Like, all right, you know. So uh, you know, being that that game's four years old, like I think the most yep. surprising thing was like there's these weird specter ghost things, and what is this even like? And people can see them, you know, like, okay. Yep. So I'm curious about that overall mystery. So I'm catching back up. Anyway, Kenneth, uh, please continue. Yep. So uh, I had, so as I said, I got the Rise of the Ronin code. So uh, I kind of had to leave Rebirth uh, to one side for the moment. So yeah, so in turn, I did kind of a. There was a preview embargo. Um, prop, was it like the eleventh of March or something like that? And so that's kind of still up in terms of what I can talk about, like story story wise, because there's a certain yeah. mission you can't talk beyond mm -hmm. what everything else there was no real restrictions because you could do side missions and you could you know do all the open world activities so i've been playing i was looking at it there my ps5 about 26 hours in now probably okay. something like that and um so yeah like i can start just giving uh, my thoughts on that if you want to have well what what have else have, what else have you been playing first ken because we can all kind of yeah. go through what we've been playing and um, yeah so as i said trying to get back into rebirth uh when i can uh, i gotta shout out a game that i really I've n n I haven't really heard anyone really talk about it. I suppose you do have to have a PSVR 2 or a meta quest or whatever it is. Uh, it's called Puzzling Places. 
So it's basically mm. a puzzle game, but it's a 3D puzzle game. And so what this company did was they like took 3D scans of real life locations. Um, and basically you put the puzzle together like a 3D space. So, you know, you think of a 2D puzzle, it's just like, well, this matches up with this, but now you have to think of it in a 3D sense where if it's a, you know, a round area, if it's, so it's really relaxing, a lot of fun. And what what's really cool is that, uh, say if you're like 60% of the way, the more you get into the actual putting the puzzle together, the sounds start. So say for example, I did one where it was like the South of France, someplace in the South of France. And as I got uh, closer to finishing it, you start hearing more sounds of the eagles and the waves crashing up against the coast and, you know, people chatter. Like, so it's such a cool, like, uh, audio experience along with, you know, what you're doing with the puzzle. So that's, that's a really cool game. I recommend Puzzling Places. Um, and then, of course, I suppose, will we talk about Bellatro now, Kirk? Uh, yeah, our, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, go ahead. Addiction, um, our addiction. So I heard of this game from... Uh, blessing Eddie Oni Jr. from Kind of Funny. He just kind of said it offhand, like, oh, yeah, I've been playing Bellatro, you know, this really cool, fun card game. And uh, I think he was kind of downplaying it. He just, you know, he didn't really sell it. So it's basically this, it's a poker roguelite. And mm -hmm. essentially, as you can see, I think it's better to explain with the video that you can see here. So you have you have a small blind, a big blind, and then a boss. So there's three different um, kind of stages that you have. And so, as you see, the score might be 300 to start. So, based on the cards, you know, if it's a two pair or if it's like a, a flush, like a flush, flush there, pair, yeah. like all hearts, you basically get points for that. And so, you basically have to try and reach that in the amount of hands that you have. So, you start with like four or three hands. So, it can be pretty tough at the start, but eventually, you get these joker cards that like will give you buffs for like a two pair or a flush. And you can really start stacking it up. And it gets, it's so addictive because you're like, you might lose in the first boss fight because the boss fight has different, like you might be able to play diamond cards or hard cards. And you're like, oh, discard damn, two yeah. random cards per hand. Is, is exactly. One and so yeah. you're like, at first I was like, this is actually quite hard. But when you get the Joker cards and there's also these planet cards, which gives you, which means your multiplier for say a, a two pair is like um, multiplied by five instead of just the base. And so you can really start stacking it up and it, it just gets, really fun to even if you do lose like later on and around uh you want to go when back you in. when you lose and it's like the literally like one of the joker cards like laughs at you and like makes yeah. fun of you <laughs> and like it's so abrupt when you lose like yes you're trying it's to like... beat the score in the top left there so it would be like 800 right. here so yeah. if you get like 715 or whatever and you barely lose it just immediately takes you to a yeah. game over screen like it's the fastest game over screen i've ever seen like it's not it's not like the dark souls like you died and it like hangs on it's just like boom you, <laughs> you freaking lost and yeah. like the like Oh, I gotta play again. Like I gotta go one more run. Like mm -hmm. feeling of this game is like so much harder than like any other game that I've ever like. It's like no, I can't end on that, bro. Like I'm not going <laughs> out like this. Like you and you have to go back in and play. And then the the flip side, of this is like the satisfaction of like seeing these like pop off, like ding, 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 ding. Yeah. That's another thing too. The sound design of this game is phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. there's this soothing kind of uh yeah. uh lo-fi kind of music like playing in the background the whole time like that's very relaxing and then like it, the 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 pings of like the cards counting is like ding 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 and then like shoots yeah. up and like you get like all the points and everything and you're like yes like I, you get like when you one shot it uh in in one hand it feels amazing but i think the real hook of this is like it's that feeling of I feel like Hades is probably the roguelike that like the most people have played. It's that feeling of, of like doing a Hades run and then you just pick up a modifier randomly like from one of the stages that's like, yeah, all your hits give you health back now or like whatever. Mm. And you're just like, oh, I'm just going to beat the game this run. Like that's what these Joker cards feel like because it's completely random the ones that you encounter. There's like this shop where you can buy them. And sometimes mm. you'll get one that's just like, uh, you know, uh, three of a kind gets a three times multiplier. And yep. like the, the times multipliers are insane. Cause like most of them, it like increases it. Like it, it just like takes it up like plus two. But like when you get like a times two, it doubles your, your, like your total points, which is crazy. So at that point, like when you get one of those, you're like, oh, let's go. Like we're going to the end, baby. And then of course you inevitably lose on like the second to last level or whatever. And you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go again. So that's why I think I was, I was messaging Brian and Mark about this privately 
over the weekend and i was like i would 100 percent recommend this game to you guys it's only 15 dollars, and it's amazing for like switch or steam deck Ooh. but like okay it's not like <laughs> with you guys being dads and like with the like it's not a game where like you play a run and you're like okay i'm done now <laughs> like it has grippingly addictive potential of like i just gotta do one more run that's you know? my, one, that's my so like... one and only issue with hell divers too <laughs> yes. is that like i'm Ooh. having so much fun and then we're like hey we completed the mission and i'm like i you know like let's go extract right away and everybody wants to do the optional objectives and i'm like i don't know if i'll be able to stick around for yes the entire run yeah. and so i run into this like where it's like i literally have to block off time to say like mm -hmm. all right if they want to go do optional objectives I'm not going to have to drop out of the party, which always never feels any fun. Yeah, but it's I'm, it's like it's really hard to explain. Yeah, why and the also, game is so intriguing. I think in terms of satis satisfaction that even the cards, if you look at the, the packs that you open, it's like uh, Pokemon cards back in the day or if, you know, collected, you know, MLB or NFL. It, it has that feeling. Oh, what am I going to get? You know, they replicate that so well that you're like, because as you said, it could be a joker that, you know, maybe buffs something up a bit or it could be like, a huge improvement and you can also see you see the way there's five cards up at the top you can mm -hmm. also if, if something you don't like or is a bit underpowered you can sell it and you can put up a, another joker card that's better so it's you kind of have to allocate the space as well for them so you can't just keep putting up joker cards um right. so yeah it, it, it's it's very addictive like it's but i i, I kind of think it's almost perfect for a dad or something because yeah you could kind of i'm, I'm know, sold like i i legit yeah. am sold based off of what you guys it's have already so said fun. like the if you like playing that, cards at all yeah. or like poker yeah. oh my god and you don't even the, have the only to, thing like, that would make this better if it ran on geforce now like that would be the only thing that would be like yeah. take this to the ultimate level it doesn't need it visually but just that flexibility because yeah steam deck ends up meaning it's an easy buy for me like if it's steam deck compatible we're good yeah mm -hmm. i just saw it's coming out on ios and android too which oh god, that is perfect. Oh, god. Perfect. Yeah, there. dude it's gonna take over like, yeah this is gonna be like uh wordle or whatever like oh yeah. my god this imagine is like that, one of those I'm games i mean like i have a dentist appointment uh this week like imagine i had it on your phone you're just like oh yeah one sec i'm just uh, finishing around her uh to the dentist you know because <laughs> it's, like, it's that addictive marvel right. snap was that game for yes. me, and it's like mm -hmm. this is like this might be better like this might be this might be better <laughs> like it's just it, it doesn't it's not frustrating in a way that once you understand it i will say i didn't quite get it i had to look up like a couple of videos it was really mm -hmm. only one or two videos and then i understood because something we're not talking about is like right here where it shows like you you can like move the jokers and stuff so you can like yeah. move them left to right and like rearrange them and replace them and say he just did it you can rearrange them and so like it's important that like the ones that add to the total come first because it goes left to right so the ones that add to the total need to come first and the ones that multiply it need to come after so you're multi multiplying that higher total and i didn't know that i needed to move them around so i kept losing once i knew that i needed to move them around i started beating the game a lot because it's just like ding 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 yeah. and it like that was so satisfying. It was frustrating when I didn't understand because I kept losing. I'm like, how am I supposed to beat this game? But now that I get it, like, it's so satisfying, like, doing these runs. And I almost kind of like it when I get garbage because, hey, what's up, Dave? <laughs> I almost kind of like it when I get garbage because, like, it's like, okay, can I make this work? You know, like, it's yeah. fun to get, like, the ultimate Joker card. Like, there's ones that are, like, they're like a uh, holographic or like they're like uh yeah. they look like they're like uh they've been like coated in like oil or something like they're rainbow kind of like like it, it shimmers or whatever like when it when it flexes and stuff like that like foil that's another one and they have like crazy modifiers and when you get those in your shop and 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 they're like a good effect you're like oh like let's go and it completely changes the game and like that feels really cool too but sometimes i like where I, the, the game's just like giving me nothing, nothing. and i'm like yeah i bet i can i bet i can beat it still like i bet i, mean, I can still beat it that's what's fun the name well. of the game again though because like y'all mentioned right the shirt. how do you Balatro. spell that b a l oh god b a l a t r o yeah, yeah. yeah. i can't yeah. misspell right, it for perfect. the dyslexic guy <laughs> that's what i was like oh my goodness yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. and even right. if you see uh down the bottom it says anti so that's basically one run so every every round uh that you beat it ups the anti so you start on one and then it goes to two and three and four and so if you get to eight essentially eight out of eight anti that's when you've like completed a run if that makes sense uh but yeah so you, you, 
Dude, and it goes forever your... after that. It yeah, gets really, exactly. really hard, but it, it can go for it. Like, I have not gotten yep. past nine. Um, just, but... just bought it. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> there we I'm go. Getting nice. I'm getting this one. It, yeah. Uh, the, and the, I mean, like, people in the industry have been just all over Twitter. Like, yeah. I have no life now. I only play Balatro. Like, it could be Balatro. Also, I've seen people. Yeah, I don't know what it Balotro. comes from. What's your word? What's it in relation to? It must be so. I don't know. Her. I just like saying Balatro. Like, I like, <laughs> you know, like, it sounds better than Balatro. Yeah. Um, yeah, this game's sick. And I think the thing that really sells it is like, there have been plenty of card games. Like there has been Hearthstone, there has been mm -hmm. Gwent, there has been, you know, uh, Queen's Blood obviously is taking off with Rebirth. And people like those games. People like Marvel Snap. Like they like those card games. Slay the Spire is another great example. Yep. Um, but even the Neon fact White, this... like Neon White as well. That's another yes. that uses cards. But the too. fact that this uses like the traditional card deck that like people know so well i think mm -hmm. gives it just that little edge where it's like so cool that the jokers then take the mundane hand of cards that you're that you're used to playing and it's like yeah but it like multiplies it by 1500 and and this one's <laughs> rainbow and it does crazy stuff to it and it gives me a bunch of money and like whatever like i don't know it's just like cool that it takes like the the very traditional very mundane cards that like your grandma uses to play solitaire or whatever um, and you're getting like these crazy multipliers. It's like plus 1500, you know, on fire on the left <laughs> or whatever. It's really great. So yeah, yeah me and me and Ken uh, really wanted to talk about it on the show because it, it's such a such a fun time. That's great. Uh, Mark, you said you look like you're going to jump in there a little bit ago. I'd like to see what you no, have to say. I, it's so I was just looking into it. It's it's by I think one guy. So an indie developer. Oh, that's um, awesome. And yep. it seems like it's a story I like to see. Right, he was a developer doing traditional uh -huh. software development and then kind of released this game and it took off so i always like to hear those stories right um it warms my heart as an indie developer as well i gosh i am very cautious whenever some this game's really addicting right because i have yeah. such limited time to play a game right now um that it's, it's all at night and i'm you know i don't want to be sitting here like honey i can't change the diaper right now i got another round to go in this poker <laughs> game so i'm, I'm probably I, this might be a game i honestly pick up on my phone just because if i pick up my switch mm, i feel I like i'm even up. more engaged with my phone i yeah. could just put it down real quick so that's awesome i i like marvel snap i like card games um so yeah i'll, I'll check this, this out once this is releases. gonna be an, an ace in the hole for for mobile pun intended this is oh, absolutely this is, this is gonna someone gonna also actually put the meaning of Bellatro was a twitch or something yeah. uh it's like a jester or a fool uh you know which makes sense because the joker card is like buffoon. such an important the, the yeah, exactly. joker packs that you open are called buffoon packs so yeah, uh, yeah. and they also and have that like whole a, play on that yeah there's one one of the packs that has like a stand-up comedian or something on it as well <laughs> they get they get so cool with the little designs yeah the art the is price. amazing i don't know yeah, if that so guy cool. did the art too or if he commissioned yeah. it or whatever but the so art cool. is in incredible so yeah mm -hmm. it's nice. it's just it's got so much personality and it's mm. just a fun time like it's just a, a well-designed game and everything I do want to shout out. Go ahead. I do want to shout out one more game um, because I was able to get uh, a code for it. I was really Ooh. excited about that. So I, I am a big fan of the original Outlast. It's sort of. I know Brian's not like a big big horror guy because he's got the kids and you don't want like. And Outlast <laughs> is like one of the one of the most gruesome. I've specifically picked this this footage because I'm hoping uh, it shouldn't have anything gruesome in it. It's going to go into sort of the more fun kind of goofy aspects of it um but so this franchise is one that i really love because it sort of sparked my whole my whole enjoyment of uh horror games in that it created the the tension and the sort of psychological thriller i feel like of the modern horror genre like this game was the first game I feel like that was like you're in it alone in this asylum in this space things are out to get you you've got to run and hide you're not just Leon Kennedy or whatever with a with a gun and shooting things in the face we're really going to mess with your head and 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 the only thing that you really can do is feel that fight or flight and and you're not going to be able to fight you're going to have to have to run and uh, alien isolation took that and run with, ran with it and then games like uh like the resident evil series and like the evil within series sort of took that and we're like well let's apply those psychological elements and that psychological horror to our <laughs> that's funny to our uh, <laughs> uh yeah this is a uh, super cali 8 i should say because this is well edited so i'm using his footage um to our games and so the outlast sort of started all that and so 
I really liked the first one. And what you're seeing now with the footage is they've taken it and they've pr they've added these like progression systems in with like these loadouts that none of this was in the first game. It was just a cinematic linear story experience. They've added these loadouts and you can customize your like your your loony bin room you know like with, with you know that you're in with your straight jacket or whatever you can like uh put posters on the wall and like co like cool sort of knickknacks and stuff everywhere so you've got that progression element there's there's all sorts of cosmetics and costumes this is a christmas theme that's awesome um and it's completely multiplayer like the the co-op is really awesome it's four player co-op and i think this was really ambitious for them to do like with them being traditionally a strictly single player franchise they said you know we're gonna go out and we're gonna do we're gonna do sort of the the dead by daylight or the texas chainsaw massacre thing that's like sort of hot right now but we're gonna do it our way like we're still gonna be faithful to what this franchise is and i think that they really sort of nailed it um there's frustrations that come with that because outlast has always been frustrating there's you know there's enemies in your way that are gonna kind of be be saying f you basically like they're 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 in your way and they're where you need to be and sometimes they're going to be a pain in the butt but that's sort of what you're getting with these games and i will say like i've had both experiences i've been by myself in a group where nobody's talking and, and i don't know anybody um and it's really scary and i'm hiding and i'm running for my life and everything and that's super intense and exhilarating. And then I've also had the experiences with like the guys are like, oh yeah, we we we've run this one like five times. Like just follow us. Like we're just gonna go. Oh, bump bonk him on the head. Oh, he's knocked out. Like you know whatever. And it's like ah, ha, ha. like we're just right around goofing off. We're like that guy didn't see that coming. Like it's so goofy and like we're basically running circles around the the bad lady or like whatever. It's both. Like sometimes you're laughing your butts off with your buddies and you can't stop laughing and it's a goofy time and you're just making fun of the guys that are chasing you. And other times like you're really up against it and you're like, ah, <laughs> this guy's editing's great. You're up against it. You're like, oh, I'm not having such a good time. Like I'm really in trouble here. And the fact that this game can like provide both of those experiences, I think makes it something special. And I think the fact that they were able to make this a good multiplayer experience when it's it's historically been a single player franchise is uh something of an achievement so i i do think that it, it's a good game and I, i'm 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 happy with what they were able to do with it all right all right shall we talk about some rise of the ronin because yeah man i think that's uh that's something that i was very interested about the conversation you were having with uh with lono about that specifically because there's you know like i i agree with what you said kirk but do we want to just let kenneth take uh, yes take charge Ken, ken's the hands-on and and uh he's gonna be doing a review but obviously uh so ken can you go over real quick for anybody who's new um to the to the to the live what what exactly the the embargo is for you and what you're able to talk about and then you can yeah. sort of give us your full full uh unbridled impressions in that regard we'll just let you run with it man so when the preview the preview embargo was up uh, like march 11th march 13th and it's basically said you can't talk about the game anywhere beyond this particular mission but like the rest of the open world was was free mm -hmm. to explore you could do side missions so uh you know i was allowed to talk about the combat and kind of different systems in the game so uh yeah as i said i've been playing it for about like 26 30 hours you kind of start off in the yokohama area and it's it's a pretty massive game um and you know this is kind of i suppose team ninja's real first kind of open world game in that sense mm -hmm. and so i think the the media thing that you notice is the combat and it's definitely trying to appeal to a wide audience and i think from that point of view i think they do a really great job because it can be challenging definitely moments where there's a particular mini boss that you're fighting and you're like you know it, it's similar to it's kind of a, a a smaller version of the nemesis system. They have a vendetta thing where if you get killed by a mini oh, boss cool. or even just a character, mm. uh, basically you have a vendetta against them. And instead of say having to kill them to regain your karma, which is what you call this game, karma is what you you're kind of uh, you level up with. So as karma goes up, uh, you get skill points and stuff. When you get, I think it's about halfway of their health down, you regain that karma, and so. As I said, every single time I died, I was like, I'm going to get that ass. So I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I had that compulsion to go back. And and sometimes I died two or three times. I was like, God damn, this guy is tough. Yeah, like there was one guy, he's like some, you know, American general or whatever. And he was whooping my ass. And I was like, and and even again, this was something something I just, uh, I, I encountered. I didn't, it wasn't like a, a marker in the map. I was just going around the world, 
there was these two smaller enemies that I killed, and then this guy came out, and I was like, ah, oh, I'll have no problem with him. And then he whooped my ass, and so uh, <laughs> I went back two or three times. Eventually, I got him, and I was like, oh, that's a, that was very satisfying. So I think the combat is very good. Par a parry is a big part of it. So you usually the way it works is they usually have a combo, and so it saves like three hits. If you can parry those combos at the correct timing, you, they kind of get staggered or whatever it is, and basically mm -hmm. leaves them open for you know a shot to you know you can get a few combo in or whatever it is. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult because they, they could like do two fast fast uh, you know um, swipe to the blade and then one that's a bit staggered, so it can be tough to get the the actual timing. But once you get it, it it's pretty powerful. Like if you can actually get the parrying down, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I, I think I just even going around each area has like, you know, in, in the map has a, a, like public order where essentially there's like a group of bandits who are have taken over the area, and once you restore order, uh, you know, like like The Witcher, you know, when you do like a village or something and that's taken over by bandits, once you complete that, you see all the people flock back to this town because the bandits are gone, you know. The, so just loads of the, loads of that around the map, but once you uh, restore order in an area, that then opens up like. Di those different side missions or you know different side activities you can do in the game uh but in terms of what you're actually doing there's uh, at the start of the game you have your kind of blade twin that they call it which is essentially someone who you were trained with uh by this uh old black blacksmith woman who basically she trained both of you and so you kind of have you're like connected you're like a kindred spirit and essentially you thought she uh, she died um, but she actually goes off and you're kind of on this quest to find her. So that's the the loose thread of the game is like you're trying to find her and you find more information about her. Uh, but beyond that, there's lots of different side missions, side activities. So there's one that's been talked about a lot that Destin Legary actually talked about, which is you do the side mission where you basically find that this ruffian is, you know, he's like uh, he's causing havoc in a particular area. And you take down his, his gang and you can also take him down. And his name is Gonzo. He's a bit of a character. Uh, you know, and he and he's saying once you get once you get him down, he's basically like, uh, oh, no, listen, you know, listen, uh, I, I can help you out because you're basically trying to find his storehouse uh, to get into Yokohama. Yeah, you need this permit to get into Yokohama, and essentially you find out that uh, you can decide to kill him, or you can listen to, to more of what he's saying, and then he'll give you more info about. Well, I also have guns and you know money and ammo if you want that as well. So I said, you know what, let's not kill this guy, uh, and let's see what happens. So then. I continue on the game, and then about like an hour later, I see a little icon that appears. This is outside the city now, outside of Yokohama. And again, this guy is like saying, oh, this this gang has come into the town and is wrecking havoc, and you know we really need your help. And guess who it is? It's Gonzo. And again, I could have killed him straight up, and he would have been completely gone from the game. But instead, this time, we decided to, we had a bit of a heart-to-heart, -heart, and I said, listen... I, I I was kind of you know it, it's it was kind of the way I was looking at it is you know you have those friends who's you know maybe fought, gone down the wrong path or has lost their way it's like listen man I see where you come from but you know I'll give you a second chance you know so I gave him a second chance and he becomes an ally so then what mm. what happens is you, when you're doing the main missions you can that's the the point where you can do co-op and so you can invite people to your game and you can play together but if you don't if you're just playing single player you have two allies that you can choose from so Gonzo is now an ally that I can okay. call on. Uh, when they're doing the main mission so i thought that was very cool and a nice little wrinkle to the story in terms of the choices you make and everything yeah uh, but i think the combat is definitely the big part of this in terms of the open world it's i would say it is fairly formulaic in terms of what you're doing like at, when i started out it was like oh i think it's actually quite reserved and they don't populate the map with like so many question marks like a ubisoft game <laughs> but then the longer you play you realize okay this is just the same thing but on a much larger scale because there's like there's a fog of war on the map, so you don't see every area. Mm. But as you progress, you actually see that this is a much bigger, bigger map than uh, you initially expected. So it's it's not going to you know win any points for like incredible open world design, doing anything new. Uh, but overall, I think it's a really fun game. The combat is very engaging, and I think I, I think the setting is quite cool. And obviously, the the comparison that everyone is going to bring up is Ghost of Tsushima, right? Um, but I think. This is going for a different approach because I think the setting is actually really cool because it's like you're seeing Japan changing. It's like around 1856, around that time, you know, um, 1850s. And you're basically seeing uh, Japan open up to the world. So you see these American ships that, uh, you know, uh, are kind of outside uh, on the Japanese coast. And so it's like, are they going to sign a trade deal with the U.S. and open themselves up? 
And so you're kind of seeing this way of life kind of basically um, uh, disappearing or like, again, are they going to evolve? So you have pro shogunate and you have anti shogunate. So people who uh, want things to say the same kind of want people uh, Japan to be closed off or they want people to actually embrace the new world, embrace these new technologies. And so what's cool is you do certain missions. And for example, I did a mission where I think it was like uh, there was this particular letter where it was like, again, surrounding what was going to happen with the fate of Japan. And I had the choice uh, once I kind of infiltrated this area with the letter, I'm going to give it to the pro shogunate or the anti shogunate. And so, again, you have that choice of like, what, which side do you want to, you know, do you want to kind of favor? So it's really interesting in that sense that it kind of splits out into these two, two different camps. So from what I've seen, I think I really enjoy the cam characters here. Um, and a lot of them are based on real world characters from that time, you know, different samurais and obviously uh, Matthew Perry who's kind of... Um, uh, I got a question in here. Curse of Kenna has played Ghost. Which game does he like more and why? What does the game? Yeah, so I'm a huge fan of Ghost of Tsushima. I was a bit of an evangelist for that game, if you want to call it. I, I got uh, this friend uh, to play it, and like he, he was a bit like, oh, it's just an open another open world game. It's like, no, no, man, this is excellent combat. The story is really cool. It's like it, I would say Ghost is an overall better game, but that does I don't I think it's what Rise of Ronin is trying to do is like in its own merits it's, it does a really good job of what it's trying to do and i think there's space for both because like the idea that you can't have like more than one really awesome open world samurai game is a bit stupid if you know and so yeah. <laughs> i think th this setting does a great job of setting it apart because again you like here you have a flamethrower and you have you have bayonets you have like pistols so it's again these meldings of these two worlds the old world with samurais and th their traditions and way of life but then you also have these new technologies that you can uh, you have this guy who's like a, a tinkerer you know he's kind of a bit of an inventor and he uh, he can basically give you new weapons so it's these two worlds colliding and i think that's what sets it apart from ghost of shima i would say overall ghost of shima is probably a better game just from what i played because again sucker punch did an incredible job but this is i think a really really very good game but I just think Team Ninja on the open world side is probably what lets it down a bit because it is it does kind of get repetitive in terms of the tasks that you do. But I think there's yeah. enough here with side missions and main story that uh, people will really enjoy it. Yeah. Every everything that you're saying it it makes me think of like uh, Japan Edo period uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood basically like going into the regions and like freeing it from the templar control and yep. you've got a guy that makes you a a, a flying contraption and like yep, other yep. gadgets and stuff yeah, exactly, and like you're yep. like the leader of of this sort of rebellion force and everything and like you you're yep. you're recruiting followers to your to your cause or it like I don't know, like, this one could be sneaky, like, this could be a sneaky, <laughs> yeah. good game, like, in yeah. terms of, like, the vibe of it and everything, I really, really like those games, and there's a reason that, like, everybody fell in love with Ezio, and it's, like, because of what the premise of those games was, and, like, your imp the impact you were having on that world, on, uh, on Renaissance Italy, and so I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more, you sort of alluded to the companion system, and yeah. sort of uh, uh, how your your choices can maybe unlock, you know, various uh, companions that you maybe wouldn't yeah. have had. Or so can you speak? I guess twofold. One to like, how, how what does that companion system look like? Is there any sort of a uh, relationship type of system? Like like I don't know if I want to invoke like a persona or something, but but a lighter version of something like that, like a relationship with your companions to like strengthen them or you or or both, and then uh in reference to those companions and then otherwise how do you feel like the game allows you to make choices that you feel are impactful and can actually change or affect your experience uh when you're playing the game yeah so firstly i think like i think there's been a lot of discussion about you know the performance mode maybe not being that you know not being able to have a, a solid 60 fps and that kind of stuff um well someone asked how, how safe yeah. the frame rate is yeah so i can talk about that first so yeah there's performance mode which is 60 fps there's quality mode 30 fps and then there's ray tracing mode which as i said before i don't really understand why they have it because there's not really much opportunity to have ray tracing like well that would like, be like water and things like that right yeah like and, but even again i did it and yeah. it's it's not even that noticeable yeah. um but performance mode it's it definitely is 
quite choppy at times. It, again, the comparison I was saying, it's not as bad as something like Survivor where that could barely hold the frame rate Jedi for most Survivor. of the game. Yeah, Jedi Survivor, Survivor. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's de- it, de- it depends on like how much that that kind of stuff affects you like if you're like someone who is like i I can't play this like it's not going to ground to a halt in terms of the frame rate but you're going to notice some dips here and there and there's also pop in as well so especially when you're on the horse because you're going quite fast you do see in the distance the quality of some of the buildings is not there but the closer you get it it kind of the detail um uh, gets better as you go so again i i don't think it's anything that's like gonna destroy the experience because i think the combat and story is really interesting and it's a lot of fun to play um, but it's just based on if you're someone who is really sensitive to that kind of stuff, you know, maybe you might play it on quality mode so you don't see that um, dip as much and you just can kind of see. But the thing it. about that is, I saw that Eric said that they, they did play it on quality and then they had yeah. trouble getting consistently uh, 30. So okay. it's like mm-hmm. you don't even really get the option to, to play it that way and have, have a, a consistent frame rate. So. Mm -hmm. uh there does seem to be i think that's what the most negative discourse about the game is is sort of the the lack of optimization with the game design and i think that maybe they've just been a little bit ambitious with the all the systems that you're talking about with the open world and things like that that do evolve sort of their formula that they've done with their last three games to a large extent it seems like maybe they you know overshot a little bit in terms of what the performance is going to be on the hardware with a game like that even if it's not you know blowing everybody away with the visuals they they are sort of reaching a little bit for what they've done in the past like again this is not sucker punch this is not sony santa monica so Mm -hmm. you know uh uh koei tecmo and team ninja are are doing what they can do they're making the game that they can make and it seems like you know with this one it, it 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 really is impressive in a lot of ways but the performance is kind of suffering to some extent for that but you're saying it wasn't game breaking for you like it, it didn't ruin your enjoyment in any regard definitely not no like and again it's one of those things as well as you just kind of get used to especially with the pop-in and that kind of stuff you kind of just like okay but I, I i don't think it's like there was one particular area i was saying that it was kind of up on the mountains and you got a good kind of uh, view of yokohama and for some reason there was a a lot more dip than most areas but again i think it's probably like, again, sometimes it can run really smooth, like when you're just running around, you're like, oh, that's nice. And then other times it can dip. But it's it's not like one of those things where it's like so jarring, where it's like, this is just dropping all the time. This is ridiculous. You know, it's one of those more nuanced things that you're like, yeah, it's a perfect no, but it's not an absolute disaster, you know? Um, it's, it's, I, it's more yeah. noticeable, like, now that we have games that are consistently 60, right? Exa- exactly, like before yeah. Sekiro yep. was just 40, 45, and that's just what it was. Yeah. And now it's like, well, we, we've kind of been spoiled to a degree. And so it's hard <laughs> to go back, I yeah. think. But mm-hmm. uh yeah, can you can you elaborate a little bit on on that companion system? And then yep. uh I don't think that a lot of people were myself included, were expecting this to be like a make choices see consequences game but it sounds mm-hmm. like there's some elements of that here so I, i'd love to hear yeah. more about that w- from your experience yeah so the companion system is called the bond system in this game so it's essentially you meet characters uh as is a similar like historical characters uh, you know from the past and essentially you kind of do a mission with them and there's actually bond missions particularly that will actually increase the bond you have with someone and what the way that works is actually you learn different uh combat styles and stances from these different people um so the so you basically also have this hub area in yokohama which is like a long house and so you can change your appearance there you know you can put new armor on you can you have a little area you can decorate and put up you know different paintings and stuff but the, you also get an opportunity to talk to your allies and if your bond grows with them you you can unlock you know, new weapons or learn oh, new so fighting cool. styles and stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, it, it, I was definitely surprised with that element, just how deep that is the bond system. And as you, you can kind of, especially for certain missions, maybe someone has like a be- better, like I just did a, a stealth mission. And so maybe you want to pick a companion that is better for stealth. stealth so they have bonuses towards that. So you, you can bring two with you, but you can choose from the ones you already have. So again, it's, it's like, which one is best for this particular mission? If it's going to be all guns blazing, you're going to be, you know, uh, maybe you want someone who has, you know, uh, who's really skilled with the blade, or maybe you want someone who's a bit, maybe has ninja stars, or, you know, has uh, stuff uh, geared towards stealth. So 
it, it is really cool system and like it's fun just to like they're very centric these characters i like them as well like for example this is uh actually no i can't really say it because i think it's the main mission but yeah i'll just say that you have um a fight with a drunk guy and it's quite funny okay. uh and you know so there's a bit of humor there as well and like again he becomes an ally later on and so you, you get to kind of learn more about him and then he even says himself yeah, I should probably cut down the drinking, but you know, I wouldn't be as fun or whatever. You know? <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of you know, there's, there's a lot of good characters, and it is fun to spend time with them. And as you said, the more time you spend with them, the more uh, you know different abilities you can get and different stances. So um, yeah, I think it's a really well done system. Um, and I think from that point of view, I think the combat, I think the upgrades are really good in this game in terms of actually meaningful. There is some that are like you know you're. 10% to stagger and 10%, you know, but there is other ones that are like really cool, like moves, maybe like a midair execution or like uh, you, you can, um, there was one that I unlocked, which was like when you're doing, a, when you get their uh, stamina, which is called key in this game, when you get their stamina bar down, you can put in a critical hit. They don't always die because maybe they have a bigger health bar. So you, but you put, get a good portion of their health down. But there's one upgrade you can unlock, which is, when you do a critical hit, your ally also does a critical hit on them at the same time. So maybe that's the extra hit you need to actually kill them instead of you know just getting a good bit of their health down. So I think the upgrade system is really meaningful, and I think people are going to really enjoy that. You know, I look, you can see it here. You can also upgrade your grapple to. You can basically, <laughs> if if they're again when their stamina is completely depleted, you can grapple them and swing them around and like throw them at enemies <laughs> and stuff as well. So I think this isn't Ghost of Shima in terms of like it's all about the weight of the sword and like yeah. it's very much methodical. This is all about action, action focused and like flying around. Like some of the the combos that they have are like not physically possible because they're so fast. They're like Ooh, you know, really, really fast. Um, but I think they really just nail that kind of fun action, you know, very fast, fast paced combat that um that they're going for. So I think that's it's not Ghost of Shima as in being more methodical. So I think they do a good job of that. Well, and again, so, those those choices, um, you don't get yeah. that with Ghost, and you don't get that with Sekiro. Yeah. So I, I yes. know that you were not able to and are not able to talk about um, uh, the rest of the main missions and the narrative, the main narrative through line uh, after a certain point. But as far as yeah. like you said, you did a bunch of side content with some goofy and and uh, fulfilling <laughs> sort of storylines and stuff there. Did you notice like that you were getting asked to make certain decisions? Like you, you talked about the guy that can be one of your companions, but yeah, do you see Gonzo. a lot of instances of that where you're you're having choices put in front of you and then you're seeing some sort of effect of that like in the actual game that that you play after that? Yeah, so it's it I would say it's kind of um patchy in that sense in terms of like some some side missions, it's like I did one where it was this guy lost his clothes and you have to get his clothes back and like is that going to have a big impact on the game later on? Probably not. He obviously becomes an ally. He becomes you get a bond with him, but you know it's not going to be like a huge uh, turning point. But as I said, that Gonzo mission uh, was was really, you know, that that was a big turning point. I could have just killed him from the very start, never hear from him again. But as I said, in the main missions, what they're doing now, it's like pro shogunate, anti shogunate. So you can choose mm. who you want to side with. Um, is that for every mission? I don't know on a larger scale does that you know is it like you know something you know what bethesda game or like uh, fallout new vegas where it's like every single mission has this sure. huge consequence probably not but i think there's enough here from what i played that it, it's definitely good as you said you can probably replay the game and there's going to be a different outcome depending on who you side with it wasn't there a similar thing in it wasn't that deep but in assassin's creed odyssey wasn't there like you could side with the athenians or the spartans kind of thing Something like um, that. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, yeah. Do you think there's going to be like world state effects or like changes based on the w which side you're supporting? And or do you think it's just going to be like a, at the very end, you might get a different ending or something like that? Yeah, it's probably going to be a more ending thing because okay. I, what's interesting at this point is like, even though there's still kind of these two factions of like, should they, you know, side more at the West or, you know, stay close to Japanese uh, culture, you're still already seeing the huge influence that the Western culture has had in terms of the buildings and in the cities and stuff like that. It's definitely still like they've kind of already opened up, if you know what I mean, yeah. but it's more, do they want to continue down that path or do they want to pull back and, and decide to be uh, more on their own? So yeah, it, it, again, it's kind of hard to tell where it's going to lead, but there's definitely enough here that, at different points of the story based on what you do it's probably going to be like 
because what's cool is they ha also have like a, a timeline say if you just forget what, what happened again before, before last time playing okay. there's a there's a timeline of the the major events and again what's cool is like it's historical like in terms yeah. of based on what happens if you decide on one faction history is going to happen either way you know so some and yeah. that will on that <laughs> yeah, timeline change it. yeah, yeah exactly. no, but you know, like it. on that timeline you can go back and say oh yeah so that's what happened when i made but that decision what, what one of the first characters time? you meet right is like a, a a really significant historical figure in yes in japan uh, yeah. i think it's like ryuza sakamoto or something like that he was a well-known uh you know ronin or a ninja or um, kind of samurai at the time and he obviously, I just looked up a picture of him. He looks nothing like uh, the, the real guy because, yeah, he, he's very flamboyant. He has, like, long hair, and he's a bit of a character, you know. He's yeah. like, oh, hey, man, we, we're on the same side. You know, let, let's uh, let's go to Yokohama together, you know. Um, so, yeah, and there's definitely, again, with the American side of things, there's a guy, something Harris that you meet, who is, like, a diplomat, a U.S. diplomat. And, again, you can, how do you want to uh, kind of interact with him? What, what, how's that going to turn out? There's an element to it as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think they do a good job of like having these historical characters, but also make them larger in life. There's no point of having these be, you know, being very banal and boring characters that you're like, you know, just give you exposition for 20 minutes. You're like, okay, this is just boring me to tears. Mm -hmm. They're they're very, you know, funny and uh, peculiar characters. So like the the guy who. Um, does all these inventions is like you know he's kind of what you expect he's like oh i get this great idea for like this new you know this new you know he's very you know he's like okay calm down calm down you know uh he, he's very eccentric and you know it, you kind of want to come back to him to see what he's what he's going to whip up next so uh yeah i think for me that hook is really cool oh is so with, with the with the yeah. combat with the the storytelling you're talking about with all the, the characters and the the developments there the companions the personality do you Dave asked, you know, do you think this is a step up uh, or step down from the Neo games? I, I think I know what your answer is going to be, but yeah, what, what what do what do you feel like comparatively to those since it's the same studio? I think, and 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 do you recommend the game? You know, at at full price. Yeah. So if anyone is expecting Neo going into this game, this is not Neo Three or Neo Four or whatever. Okay. It's a very different game. There's definitely elements that they that they kind of bring with it in terms of like like the, the the combat is fairly fast paced and definitely like you do have to concentrate you can't just like hack and slash and hope for the best you do have to concentrate and look look at the way they're attacking you and there's obviously like um, a red flashing attack you can't parry but you can dodge um but it's definitely a more you know it's definitely a more kind of uh, accessible combat system here where it's not going for this souls like where uh, you know you're like you're going to you know, spend uh, like an two hours just to beat one boss you know it's it's definitely trying to be more accessible and i think as someone who i wouldn't be a huge souls fan in um in general in that in, in that sense so for someone from that point of view i think it's nice that they've been able to kind of still have a challenge to, to the difficulty and obviously you can put it on a hard mode if you really want there's to an easy mode yeah i don't know yeah so it, know that yeah. they call it like dusk and dawn it's basically easy normal hard i'm playing normal mode but if you want i suppose you want more of a, a challenge easy baby mode. Hard. yeah exactly <laughs> baby mode so you can play on that whatever you want but um it's definitely not like trying to replicate uh neo here at all you know I, there is a similarity in terms of you get the amount of like swords you get in this game and equipment is like it's hilarious like again i, I like when i was doing the preview i think i had played maybe 10 hours and I counted and I had 35 weapons. Uh, you know, and some of them are like just, you know, 79 version of a katana, and it's the same katana, but you have like a 90, it, it's uh, the power of it is 90. So it's the same weapon, but just one is a, um, a bit better. But then you just get all these different pikes and you get uh, bayonetas and like all these different weapons. So I, uh, after a while, I was just like, you know, I think this is cool because at least there's variety to it and I can mix and match, you know. Because obviously some games maybe they make you work harder for it, and it's like, oh, you know, it, when you able to grind out and get that particular weapon that you want, it's really satisfying. But the approach they're going for here is just like we're just going to throw all this crap at you. And same with armor as well. There's so many different armor sets, and uh, you know, there's so there's what you're wearing here and the armor. So you can also do transmog as well. So in terms of you can have you have your look, but you can also change your armor. If you want to upgrade it, like or have a more um, heavy armor that's going to get a 
get you better protection, but it's not going to change your look. So, you know, you can keep the look, but also have uh, the upgraded armor that you want as well. So, yeah, there's t- it's it's not Neo if, if you're thinking it's going to be Neo 3. But I think what they I think what they do here, I think, is a really good job, especially with the combat and the upgrade system that, you know, maybe you might be pleasantly surprised here that, okay, fine, I'm disappointed it's not Neo, but I actually am really enjoying the combat because there's still a challenge here. It's different, but it's still really fun to play. So, you know, that's what I'd say. It's not Neo. And comparing it to, like, which is a better game, again, I think they're serving two different sets of people, you know. It seems like so. you really enjoyed the story and, and those sort of elements yes. and all the characters and the personality as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And I think that's, like, again, it's not flawless. It's not like, you know, it's not like the characters you get in Rebirth or something like that. But, again, for, I suppose for their first real try at kind of trying to have those really interesting engaging characters that you want to see more of i think they did a good job so yeah all right i think we got that one in the bag all right let's move on to our uh, second video game that we really want to cover so that's a part of the title and that would be dragon's dogma 2 which is set to release as a part of uh, game Arma, March Arma game and <laughs> game <of> done, <laughs> or uh, what I forgot what a uh, chat how they kind of broke it up. Arma game done, there it is. Uh, <laughs> the, it's set to release here on on Friday. This is something that I'm really excited about. As uh, as we were talking, uh, and I was just chatting in uh, the Reforged Gaming stream with Kirk and Lono. Uh, I was like, yeah, like for me, like you know, when we look at uh, Rise of the Ronin, like my aesthetic, my preference is typically high fan like fantasy rpg and that's exactly what uh dragon's dogma 2 looks to be delivering uh as well as just a massive open world and so i thought we kind of go around give our uh thoughts or what we're expecting uh with the game obviously we have not played it yet uh it is coming out this friday and uh, i'd love to kind of get y'all's thoughts on are you excited about dragon's dogma 2 where do you generally fall is this going to be a game that you pick up but as it relates to our previous topic like uh, with so many games coming out like where does this fall are you going to be picking it up soon or are you going to wait for a discount in terms of the price let's start with mark we haven't heard from you in a while i uh i'm the guy that's buying all of the three games uh on friday um you know again that may change once baby two three four come around but for now i'm excited about all these games this game really intrigues me because i've never played the first one but when they re-released it on the switch there were a lot of people kind of in the journalism sector saying like this is a game a lot of people missed out on it was ahead of its time in a lot of ways um and you know some people kind of said it was ahead of its time really before like the souls type games took off i know this isn't necessarily that but when i see the previews without really getting too much in the details it has a lot of things that i i'm really intrigued by like i was a big fan of monster hunter right and it seems like that's kind of an aspect to the game in a lot of ways so yeah I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I was surprised to know that there isn't any co-op, right? But that's also sticking with the first game as well. So there's there's some like um you can kind of create uh an icon in your own game and send them to a friend's game or something like that. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll try it this weekend. I don't know how much time I'm gonna get into it. Um, but yeah, this I'm with you, Brian. I love like. I love Japanese history. So like to me, Rise of Ronin looks really intriguing because it's the end of the Shogunite period, which I find fascinating. But like high fantasy speaks to me in a very, very deep, deep level. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The combat in this looks great and it brings out 10 new vocations. So for those of you who don't know what a vocation is, it's your class or if you're from Final Fantasy, it's it's your job. Uh, you make your character and then you get to make a pawn and with that, then you can also recruit up to two other pawns, which can be pulled out from the internet. We've even seen like an asthma gold pawn and so many other uh, different ones that they're kind of promoting and creating. But what is interesting, and I'd love to get your guys' thoughts, because I think there's going to be a conversation around this game talking about quality of life i don't know because the game traditionally offers multiple difficulties but there are no quest markers there's no symbols over people's heads saying i got a quest for you but if you have a pawn that has completed the quest let's say your friend has and you're and you recruited his pawn he knows where that quest needs to go so he could actually take you then to it directly as opposed to like hey here's this way marker and we've talked about ghost of shishima on this podcast already. And one of the things I find beautiful about that game is that it uses the game 
the world, the wind in this case, to direct where you need to be headed so you don't end up having this like, you know, arbitrary, we were all used to it, like a little waypoint. And so I think what that does for me personally is that in a lot of these games, I start turning off mini maps. I start turning off some of these helpful things and I find that I'm way more immersed in the game and the world because I'm not now essentially running it as an efficiency simulator of wait where do i need to go i'm not even going to pay attention to what this character's saying to me because i just want to get to the next thing so i can you know i guess achieve you know the fastest clear time I, I, I don't i don't truly know but what do you guys think about that in terms of uh you know just being able to use the the ui and kind of directing where players should go and then how the pawn system interacts with one another especially with the online asynchronous because it's not a multiplayer game at all i mean i'll, I'll chime in yeah yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, haven't, we haven't let you talk at all no that's fine i mean sometimes i have something good to say sometimes i don't it's fine now um it, that could be done good or bad right um yeah to your point about ghost again i really love how there is that natural exploration where the world unveils things there's conversations that direct you places and if, eventually as you get further in it, it gets pretty icon heavy too um but i this game isn't including fast travel right there's there's no so fast there is fast travel but okay. there's a trade-off so there's a couple different things you have a fairy stone which is incredibly rare and expensive uh, and that will let you fast travel like we all know and love, right? Sure. But then you also have like various different ox carts, which are on a predestined path. And okay. you can ride on the ox cart from point A to point B. You don't have mm -hmm. any control over that. You literally have to go to the new town and figure out what's going where. And then uh, the other, the third option is hoofing it on foot, baby. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. there is fast travel, but it's... I wonder if it's going to be one of those things, like if anybody here is a Final Fantasy fan, like I would generally sleep on my elixirs and I would have so many of them by the final fight that I, and I never really ever needed them, right? So there's just some things where I'm like, I'm, is that going to be me with the fairy stone system where I'm so conservative about using them? Or, uh, you know, I don't, I don't truly know yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd have to see, right? I mean, you could do this in a way that's brilliant, where you enjoy the world so much, the sense of discovery and experience is done so well, where all that, you know, not being there, to your point, the efficiency system mm -hmm. makes this a better game. I'm going to lean towards that's probably going to be the execution, right? Because I trust Capcom. I trust the development team and a lot of, I've, I've read a little bit about why they made the world this way. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think uh, you could do it badly, right? We could, again, not this necessarily, but you can make it so where it's such a, um, it's such almost like it, it's almost so sim heavy to where mm -hmm. it devoids the fun out of the game, and you have to balance that, right? Even if you are intentionally going for more of a realistic experience in that sense, you still have to balance it. Um, so yeah, I, I think if they do it right, this this has a lot of potential. Um, I just I just want to kill a giant ogre. Like that's I'm just watching this video right now. Going, this looks great. I know a lot of people are yep. saying Rise of Ronin is you know not the greatest looking game. That stuff doesn't really push me. Gameplay is what pushed me. Story is what pushed me. But this game, I mean, you're just putting daggers in that thing's head. It looks pretty. <laughs> it looks pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, like, I'm definitely a big high fantasy guy as well. I love The Witcher. Um, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic game and like so when when I saw the kind of reveal trailer and all that kind of stuff I was definitely very intrigued I, I for some reason I don't know I have this feeling that maybe this could be this year's like Baldur's Gate 3 in a way that it surprises people and people are like oh this is like you know this is the game people are sleeping on it mm -hmm. um, I think everybody wants it to be I don't yeah, think, and that's I don't think true, that it that's will true. be I think everybody yeah. wants it to be and <laughs> I think there's a difference but yeah yeah well, but one of the things about that, yeah. to jump in on that point, though, yeah. is that Baldur's Gate 3, there were still people who didn't enjoy the game because they don't like turn-based combat. And yeah. even if this doesn't have that level of depth in terms of the story and all the knock-on effects of Baldur's Gate 3, like, this does give you that action combat fix. And so there could definitely be somebody who is like, oh, this is my Baldur's Gate, you know, 3 moment because I was wanting, you know, more out of that game you know obviously i i really enjoy boulders gate 3 but anyway kenneth i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead um yeah so it's one of those things where like this god there's so many games at the moment as i said i still have <laughs> to finish finish rebirth and like a dragon infinite wealth i've been playing that for quite a while like you know i'm further in that game want to finish that so it's definitely one where i'm gonna wait and see what the reviews say and like if it's one of those things where it's like you kind of need to get this now 
maybe I'll pull the trigger on it. Um, but yeah, it look it's definitely looks really intriguing. And I did play the the first one was it like last year. Yeah, it doesn't hold up at all because you know, it, like Oof. you know, in terms of what was it like a PS3 Scathing game? Indictment. <laughs> yeah, no, just in terms of purely <laughs> graphically, nothing to do with the gameplay or anything. It was just like, yeah, this looks quite out of date and old. So again, if it's like that kind of gameplay, like it looks like here in kind of updated. Like 30 FPS is a bit of a bummer. Um, that's quite a pity. I know, I know it's the only not little like... bit of drama, and that's yeah. generally on consoles. But what's interesting about that to kind of highlight yeah. it because uh, as a content creator, I get a lot of different perspectives, and I've seen people coming out of the woodwork insisting that the PS5 and Xbox Series X are going to run it at 60 frames a second. And I go, I don't think so. And I give them links to the articles yes. that are saying that if it happened to be the case awesome but i just can't yeah. expect it it does have 120 frames a second option and it is currently rumored to be coming to geforce now uh, we have not gotten an official confirmation on that announcement but uh that's where essentially you're going to see the uh the frame increase being uh being touted in this case yeah i thought john lineman of of digital foundry like already went hands-on with this and they did and, people are coping confirmed. hard <laughs> yeah hasn't, yeah it's been confirmed hasn't it space because it not only is it 30. is it 30 yeah. frames it's not capped and so right. john lineman was was saying that this mm. basically has the elden ring problem at least elden ring on 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 xbox consoles because mm -hmm. um, it ran considerably better on playstation but it has the elden ring problem of being around that 35 like 31 to 37 type okay. of frame rate range mm -hmm. and it's like at that point just cap your frame rate at 30 because yeah. the the variance uh, uh, along those tiers from like 30 to almost 40 is is more jarring than it just being a steady 30 and so he was very very hopeful that there will just be a 30 i mean that's why games were capped at 30 on previous generations uh for a long time and 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 so even on uh, with back compat, you know, on on consoles like the Xbox Series X, unfortunately, without stuff like FPS boost that Xbox is is sort of leading the way on, some games are just stuck, you know, locked at uh, uh, 30 frames per second, even if they have the capacity on new hardware to run it at 60 frames because they're uncapped. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of twofold there in that. Uh, for me personally, I think that if they don't do a uh, 30 FPS cap for this, then it will be to the detriment. Uh, if that's not an option, at least it will be to mm -hmm. the detriment of the gameplay experience. Because I yeah. played, uh, I actually played Elden Ring on both consoles, uh, PlayStation and Xbox, because um, I knew uh, I had friends that that had the game in both places, and Elden Ring was just an insane cultural moment. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna buy it on both. Screw it, play it with everybody. Um, and I was like, whatever, I don't care about the frame rate because this is one of the games of the generation. I still stand by that. That's what it was. That's what it is. That's why people are hyped about Erd Tree. Um, and yeah, it was rough on Xbox. Elder, Elder Ring was rough on Xbox um, at, at, at 30, 35 frames with no cap. And, and From Software has notoriously bad frame pacing as well in their games. And this game threatens to have some similar issues. So hopefully they will have... A, a 30 frames per second cap it sort of opens up that uh sort of whole discourse about you know why doesn't console have at least somewhat parity in terms of the options that pc has in terms of being able to adjust what your what your settings are what your frame rate and your graphic settings are like some some games don't offer a bespoke performance performance mode and, and fidelity mode or or they only have certain options that maybe aren't ideal um but also at the same time for me personally if the game is uncapped, this is a PS6 game. Because as we saw with games in the past on previous generations, now on the Series X or on the PS5, you know, Sekiro on the PS5, 60 FPS, baby, locked. PS4 Pro was 40, 45. Mm -hmm. So it's the perfect PS5 game, Sekiro now, even though it's a PS4 game. And so with this, if they're going to leave it uncapped or if it's going to be an option of whether you want it uncapped or not, and they're not going to lock it, that to me is like great, awesome. I'll wait to play this on better hardware. And this is only because I'm not a PC guy. Mm -hmm. um, I think you and I would both agree, Brian, that the best way to play this game is going to be GeForce Now, presuming that it comes to GeForce Now. Yeah, um, that, that's becoming more and more. And obviously, like I continue yeah. to 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 
just absolutely love it. I'm not sponsored by them in any way that the service is so good. We need to good. fix and, that. We need to fix that well, now. There, we've had a meeting. There's been, there has been a, a phone call, so we will see. If Give this can... man money. I don't need it's not the, the their affiliate or like their uh, ambassador program. Isn't no, but you genuinely the love them so much. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. love that service. Oh, so, yeah. So yeah. it's like it would actually give me an additional license to connect. And I was yeah. like, I'm going to get my wife a Logitech G cloud if they if they accept me yeah. and we're going to run her on like I'm going to use this for hers so we can play these games together in the living room because we thankfully have the Internet that, that can handle it. And I get that that's still going to be. Uh, a uh, an issue but i would recommend for anybody who's just curious and you want something uh, because i think to kind of call back one thought i want to add is that i think it's the word uncapped that has confused some of these gamers that i'm talking to in the comments thinking like oh it's gonna uh, go to 60 and no. then it's gonna dip down and it's like no, no they're like they're saying they're gonna hopefully get 30 and it's gonna yeah. dip down just it like will easy. it will on next gen though that's yeah, the, yeah. that's the oh, yeah. good part about uncapped and that's it, it. It that's why I love Xbox for doing FPS boost. Mm -hmm. PlayStation not so much because a lot of games are like I just found out uh, in the wake of Suicide Squad. I was like, oh man, I, I really I want to go back and experience some of the old Arkham games because maybe I mm -hmm. maybe I didn't really appreciate them for as good as they were. Yeah. I'm gonna go back and revisit those. And so I I'm gonna play Arkham City again on my PS5 now because I've got the new hardware. But I figured out I can't patch it. I can't download right. the update. I've got to be offline and install the disc on the PS5 to get 60 frames because right. the patch caps it. So if they're going to do uncapped, it's going to hurt people this gen as far as the experience yeah. that they're going to have. But it's the same thing with Elden Ring. Elden Ring is 60 on PS5 if you're playing the, the PS4 disc. And so, like, I'm st I'm stoked if it's going to be uncapped because I'm just going to wait and I'm going to play. And again, yeah. that's that's for me. I'm like a stubborn console only guy. So like, <laughs> you know, and, but there's other people like me. There are there's people right. that just don't game on PC at all. Well, and so like, there, let's I see chat, you know, in this time, <laughs> talking about PC Master Race. I do want to say that, like, <laughs> if you're worried about latency, as people <laughs> tend to bring up, uh, like you can try GeForce Now for free. They have a free version that you can play. There are some downsides in terms of like you might have to wait longer and you have lesser sessions. But hashtag not out. sponsored. Hot, yeah, <laughs> hashtag not sponsored. But I tried out because latency isn't a problem. Like I'm playing first person shooters. I'm playing Call of Duty and I'm doing just fine, having a good time. And I don't have to then, you know, so like I don't think latency is going to be a, like I think that's a problem that's solved for some people, but you never know. So try it out. See what you think, because PC Master Race like PC Master Race gaming is awesome and I'm glad it exists, but they aren't mass market like something that the console is. And so when it's all said and done, like what? you know geforce now gives me it gives me the convenience that kirk likes in consoles like, i don't have to worry about drivers i don't have to worry about things mm -hmm. i know the game will run maybe it's not going to be locked at 30 frames a second but i know that the game has been you know certified there's a level of just like i just want to play my game but it gives me then the power of that 4080 it then gives me the power of the thing so it's like i do wonder if we're going to see a big shift in terms of that when we talk about ps6 I'm betting there's just going to be a PS6 cloud version. Like, it's just like, yeah, you can just stream it. We're good. <laughs> you know, like that's well, what and I just, see Sony moving to. Not as well. even, not even just for, um, like, I think you're talking about just like the ease of use, like on mm -hmm. the lower tiers. But like, if you want to get that more expensive, uh, you know, premium tier or whatever, if you're somebody that's like, oh, I don't necessarily want to want to pick this up on, on PS5 because it's, it's got that wonky frame rate. Uh -huh. Um, but you don't have a super, you know, tricked out PC or whatever with the 4090 or 3090 or whatever it is. Like, you know, you've got like a, a normal, <laughs> a normal rig <laughs> over there, a normie rig. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Like you can, you can subscribe f to that premium tier temporarily and, and get the bells and whistles. And I would assume this game's going to pretty much run at 60 frames, like pretty consistently. I think if you you're using that, if you're using that service. Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't want to over oversell, but like, I don't think you're gonna be having any issues on that premium tier with the the souped up rig that GeForce now offers. Right. Um, you know, with 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 the game running at, at at sixty at the very least. So if if you're worried about console and you're somebody unlike me who's willing to play on PC, but mm -hmm. you don't have a super a super nice you know uh newfangled bells and whistles PC. Right. I would say like this is. 
this is a great time to try out GeForce Now as a service for this game in particular. This game seems like, and again, it's not confirmed, but they've got the original on there, so it's kind of like stands to reason type of deal. Oh well, yeah, there's um, there's been some real strong suggestions. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like a little tease. A bunch well, of it's like why did ago. why did the first one come to GeForce Now like only eight months ago? Like it wasn't <laughs> on there before, and then it just came th th like this past year. I wonder why they did that. You know, They're like tweeting out dragons and dog. You know, emojis. <laughs> Are you for real? Know. That's great. <laughs> Great. Uh, but yeah, this seems like the perfect game to to use that service for. And maybe that'll be more of a trend now because we're seeing these games. They're not really having the, the frame rate that we might like on, on our consoles. Right. You know, Rise of Ronin mm -hmm. is, is, a, is an example of that. So, uh, But for me, I, I, as somebody who's, you know, firmly entrenched, stubborn console gamer, um, I, I'm going to wait for the Digital Foundry. And then if Digital Foundry tells me it's uncapped, which again, uncapped is bad for people that want to play this on PS5 right now. Mm -hmm. They should not do that. Mm -hmm. They should have a capped option because that variance is very jarring to the eye. It, it, it doesn't feel good. Having it at 30 is much, much better. Even though it's a lower frame rate, the variance can be very disruptive of it jumping up and down. Um, but if, if, if 30 cap is only just an option you can implement or if they, for whatever reason, just keep it uncapped, that's just the way that it is, that's great for me because that means this will be a great PS6 game because it can jump all the way up once it's got better hardware. So I think I think this is just a wait for me probably because mm -hmm. I think this is going to be as far as the experience, this is going to be a legendary experience. Like there's no way this game doesn't become you know a hallmark in terms of people that that really enjoy this genre and this type of adventure type game like Skyrim, like Elden Ring. Um, so it's just a question of like, uh, I mean, I did the same thing with cyberpunk. Like I'm willing to wait on these games being that I'm just a console person. I know what that means. If I only am going to play on console to where I get the better experience. And I did that with Xbox games, um, you know, waiting to get the series X and I'll probably do that here with dragon's dogma too. But I, I think everybody that plays it is going to have a tremendous time as yeah, long as they're fun. getting the performance yeah. that they want out of it. Just uh, just looking at the footage and stuff, it, it's quite weird that this isn't a co-op game. Um, like I suppose when you think about it, if they're having issues, so. well, like just you can see the the amount of like kind of different pawns and kind of allies you have. It, it kind of feels like it would lend itself to playing co-op together. You know, you taking down trolls and bosses and stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I just think it's weird, but like, uh, yeah, I suppose if they're having trouble. With a non co op element, then if they have to add online to it and play in co op, maybe that's a bridge too far, you know, to, in terms of development of it. So, yeah. um, just a thought, not every though, game you know. can be Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3, I guess. Yeah, 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 no, yeah I, I, exactly. That had best yeah. both worlds. I, I agree with you. It looks like to me like it perfectly lent itself to being a co op game, and it, it doesn't mean that in the future there might not be a mode released true. or something like that. Like, yeah, think of true. Legends mode with Shishima, like that surprised a bunch of people that wasn't talked about. It's different in ways, but it's still that game yeah. and co op. But, um, I'm with you, Kirk. I'm weird. I have a nice PC with a 3090, and I do buy and play games here, but like when I play PC games, I'm like, man, I feel like I should be working because I'm at my desk. And so right. often I buy games for my PlayStation. Like you I said, gotta I buy this on PC. Like do well, not buy I, do not buy this for PlayStation. Don't do it. It's too don't late. do it. Refund it's, your pre-order, oh, Mark. Oh. What are you yeah. doing? I'm <laughs> offering perspective that's needed. Is it worth it? Right. I'm gonna sit down that's with true. a 77 inch OLED and I'm gonna say <laughs> how does this game play? And I'm sensitive to frame rate, but it never really drives me. Like, gosh, I just played Princess Peach Showtime on my on that giant TV, and I was like, whoa, this is not like Ghost of Tsushima in terms of FPS. Um, it, it, to your point about it being uncapped, though, that's that's really the issue, right? Like when some yep. people get upset, which only at 30, I'm like, listen, if they design the game around that and it's optimized for that and it's a good game, then you're gonna have a good experience, yeah. right? Games just gotta be fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gameplay's king, typically. I think we we just have to hope that that was just an er that was an earlier preview build, and that they will put some sort of sure. cap on it. I mean, I would hate uh, personally if it's in a patch. I guess that'd be better because then I could play I could play it on the disc, so that'd be fine. I just want I want them to do it where I can play it uncapped at some point, but I also want 
them to cap it for the people that are going to play it now because it's going to be a worse experience if they don't cap it at all. So, sure, do it in a patch and I'll just not download the patch and, and play it offline on my PS6 or whatever. I don't know, but yeah, I'll play this eventually. It looks too good not to. From from a DevOps perspective, you got to be thinking, right, this is a game releasing everywhere. So that mm -hmm. means, one, they, they can't specifically optimize it just for one system. So mm -hmm. there are going to be these questions they have to ask internally, like, hey, this isn't perfect quite yet, but it's good enough if not great enough to where people are going to enjoy it do we release that patch a couple months down the road and allow us to get it out the door timing wise calendar wise that you see that all the time right right and do you so do I, you don't want to set this game up to compete against the elden ring you know expansion exactly uh, for example like we already talked about like how march feels like a, you know armageddon but armageddon. june also is feeling pretty stacked you know and so it's like yeah you want to sit down and say especially with the theme because i mark i agree with you 100 because with the theme you know that's another fantasy kind of rpg uh in that regards action combat and so it's like you don't you want to oversaturate the market like what they did with titanfall 2 sandwiching it between battlefield and call of duty and everybody's like all right like i'm gonna play the one that i'm used to and and then now you're seeing so much praise and, and adulations for titanfall 2 which is great I'm curious yeah. if there will be like a weird, this will be like a weird situation where they like do some type of cap or something for the Series S. And then the Series S ends up being the smoothest way to play this game. Because <laughs> this, this, I could totally Dude, see something that like one, that I happening. would love that drama online because that, oh. would be the, that would be some sweet console. Elden Ring war. got so close to that. Like Digital Foundry was trying to find a way to play the old like Xbox one version of it on series X to like get it to run well. Cause it ran so bad on Xbox. The best way to play ended up being the PS4 version on PS5. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if something, something weird ends up happening with this game where it's like, it runs the best on series S or something because I, I could see them. Cause like, why would they not cap it for that yeah. early build? So it's like, right. what if they cap it for series S because it's series S and then it ends up being the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not really calling it, but like if that, if something like that happens, I'm going to, I'm going to claim it, you know, like yeah. I could see something interesting there. So keep, keep your eyes peeled. All right, guys, I think that's uh, what we want to cover, especially for Dragon's Dogma 2. And I know you guys want to talk about some Princess Peach, but unfortunately, I need to kind of dip out. So I'm going to let Kirk run the show from here, and I'm going to be listening in while you guys talk about this incredible game that I can't seem to, you know, <laughs> hear. I hear nothing but praise from you guys. The, the, game, of the, the game of the week, the game of the month, some might it, say. Here's the question. Do you think out of all these games, which one will sell more? I wouldn't be surprised if this one does simply because it's it's Nintendo. But yeah. 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 All right, guys. Y'all have a good rest of your show, and I will. Uh, I'll be lurking. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. See ya. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm. I shoot. I forget whose footage I'm using. I would really like to credit them. Um, but yeah, this this game is. Uh, some might say unfortunate timing. Others might say Nintendo does what Nintendo wants, and they will not be denied by any sort of competition. Um. So yeah, I this is one that in spite of everything else that's coming out, uh, Mark, you said you're going to be getting it as well along with the other two. And I think this is the only one that I'm really considering purchasing. Uh, hey, and you that sure is... about that, but it sounds like you might be more sure than when you were messaging me this weekend, right? Yeah, I, I so uh, and that's that's a weird thing that I don't necessarily want to get into on the show. But I, I do think this is one that might end up getting DLC because of the sure. nature of it is that she... She has the various sort of, uh, for people who don't know, it, it's like a play or theatrical theme that's hence Princess Peach Showtime. Like and Puppeteer she has, or something. Do you remember that game, Puppeteer? She has sort of these these personas that she she becomes. Um, one of them is like a, a Zorro type of uh, character. And then another one is a, I think she's going to transform right now. Yeah, there you go. This is the, like the sword, sword fighter character. And then there's like a pastry chef one. We've seen like an Elsa frozen looking uh, figure, ice figure Seder one. There's a cow girl. There's a, a Kung Fu and a ninja one, a superhero one. So there's a lot of different personas or, or uh, uh, characters that she becomes and and gets various abilities uh whether it's combat or, or literally baking cakes it's a lot of variety here in this game which i think is one of its strong suits but i could definitely see some some dlc coming down the line there being like a 
a, a full package type of edition later. And I, that's one thing that really irks me is like when I buy a game and then it, I find out later like, oh, I don't have the full game, you know, because there's more there's more to it. And that's probably like a dumb thing to to be uh, bothered about. But it, it does. I, I like to I like to sit down and play a game. And when I play it, I played the whole thing. So it's like if there's going to be more coming, um, you know, it's like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to go back at that point. So, so I'm doing the same thing for Final Fantasy 16. I'm waiting for the, the DLC for that game to go in and, and enjoy the whole thing. And 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 I, there's been no rumors or anything of, of there being any type of DLC for this. So I, I that's completely just because of the type of game it is in the premise. So I may be, you know, uh, anticipating a big fat bowl of nothing here. Uh, but I will say, even in spite of that, I really am considering picking this one up. Um, not only because I, I might end up doing a review for this. I, I think I alluded to it on Lono stream that there's only like a 15% chance of that because there's probably going to be outlets like IGN and everybody else. They're going to jump on this way earlier in the week than Friday, which would be the soonest that I get my hands on this. Cause there's no shot that Nintendo's giving me a code for anything as long as I live. Uh, cause that's just Nintendo. But, uh, not only that, that there's slight review potential here, but also when I say that from playing the demo, I think that this game has the potential to be, and 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 I'm serious about this, Mark. This game has the potential to be my favorite Nintendo first party IP game of all time. Whoa! And 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 I have whoa, not whoa, played whoa. the two Zeldas. I've not whoa. played the two Zeldas. Whoa, but whoa. those aside, yeah. hey man, those are those you got to have some time to play those games. Like, let's be serious. Sure. Those aside, Mario 2D especially has never really spoken to me. So I haven't played Wonder. I would love if Wonder sort of changed my mind about that. But I played a lot of the other ones. Um, and and it, like I played Odyssey. Mario what do you think about it? Odyssey? Odyssey is is good. The hat mechanic never really got me. The Man. same thing with uh Sunshine. Like I I these are games. The personality of them, the charm, the attention to detail. Like they really win me over. I love these worlds. I love these characters. I really want to enjoy the games. I bought them all. God knows I bought them all and and played them all for you know five to to eight hours to maybe even ten hours sometimes, and I'm just like. I just, I don't know if I don't get it or if I just don't like it or if it's just hard or I'm also like Mario challenge. Like, like I, like my ex-girlfriend when I, when, uh, the, like the last Mario, uh, uh, the deluxe or whatever, the one with Nabbit and whatever it came yeah, out, yeah, yeah. there was like a Wii port, yeah. um, Wii U port. She was like it, it destroying me in co-op, you know, because like it, it, as a, in her childhood, she played these games. Right. And I don't have that. Like I didn't, I didn't really grow up with these type of games, um, and I didn't, I didn't grow up with a GameCube. I bought one during the pandemic because I, again, Nintendo's always been something that I've sort of admired from afar. I haven't had one since a '64, and I really love the '64. I had a bunch of Mario games for '64, but um, I've always sort of admired uh, Mario and Nintendo from afar since then. But I haven't really had like a hands-on sort of nostalgia for it in, in sure. any regard. So, you know, I missed a bunch of stuff, you know, in the GameCube era with Sunshine and, and Luigi's Mansion and, and all those type of games. And I didn't, games. I didn't get to play Galaxy or Galaxy 2 on the Wii. And so I played a lot of those games in retrospect, kind of, you know, in the last five or, or so years. And, like, they're not really hitting for me, I don't think, the way that they hit for people at the time that those came out. And also, I don't really know that those games are, like made for me i think i really really struggle with like the platforming and like those type of aspects of of those games that like the core mario game is founded upon yeah. and a lot of other games like kirby and, and other franchises that nintendo makes even like yoshi's crafted world uh borrow a lot from those mario franchises and those mario games and the thing that i really really love about this game first of all it's it's wholesome as all hell like I don't think you can find a more wholesome game, even even on a Nintendo platform. Like this thing is just like you did it, and like good job, and like what are we gonna do? <laughs> Pete, save us! Exactly. Like it's like my mic's probably coming out because I'm like trying to do a high pitch, but they, they got like the the little the little dudes here. I don't even know what they are. They're not Koopas. They're not Toads, but they're no, little, they're little ducks guys or, or whatever. Ducks, yeah. 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 
Like they're they're cheering you on at every turn. It's just, it's so, like it, this game's gonna be so encouraging for your kids if you have kids. Like it's telling yeah. you you can do it, and oh you did it, and like whatever. And just like it's goofy, it's fun. Like the gameplay here, like you literally just like putting icy on cakes and stuff. Yeah, and the contrast from from that to like the hack and slash combat, like there's so much variety here. But it's just like a wholesome, charming vibe that I've always loved from Nintendo. That I've always wanted to get into. But then there's some sort of barrier for me of not having that sort of like it, it muscle memory and understanding yeah. of like being able to do the Mario backflip and the platforming and the slides and the run and mm -hmm. you, you jump and you hit the pole at the top and when I've never been good at any of that stuff. And yeah. like so there's always been sort of a barrier for me. And this game is like doing its own thing. And it's like different gameplay. Like it's not your stereotypical Mario platformer gameplay. And it's like Dude, is like, is this the one? Like, is this the one that I can enjoy as not having that background? Like, not being somebody that really can play a 3D world or the new Super Mario games. Or, you know, I'm worried that, that Wonder is not even going to hit for me because that, that side-scroller traditional Mario game, I've just never had the aptitude or the history with it. And mm. this one is, like, capitalizing on all that charm, all that Nintendo magic, but it's giving me, like, type more, like very basic like traditional action type of gameplay and i it feels like it could be something special for me so i and i think that that's gonna go for a lot of like young kids as well sure. especially sure. like little girls like yeah. little girls yeah. are gonna play this and More they're gonna be like oh this is this is pre peach like it's not mario right. center stage it's 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 a young woman a young lady you know that 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 little girls will be able to, or or even you know grown women will be able to sort of see themselves represented here and i think them putting the entire spotlight on peach uh with no reference to mario or having to save mario or mario being in another castle or any jokes like that is is a really good move here and i i think that this one is is going to knock it out of the park i really do yeah this is this is only the second game i'm pretty sure where it was just exclusively for princess peach right they did super princess peach back in the ds for two yeah and i heard that one was like a little bit problematic maybe like in hindsight i, mm. I don't know if we want to yeah i don't yeah. even know but it was a fine game but i think this one is 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 doing leaps and bounds better than that one in terms of both gameplay and sort of the the premise and the and the narrative of like what's going on sure um and and just yeah it just seems so so charming like like in the in the pastry chef thing in the demo like the like ratatouille style like music is playing and everything like the vibe of this is so spot on like it's impossible not to have fun and feel good and smile when you're playing this game yeah it it surprised me because again i knew it was announced and i got the general idea like oh you're going to go through different stages and you'll get different abilities per stage but like that demo the first one's hack and slash and i was cracking up when you do that parry dodge it's like a slow motion like i'm like that's like their attempt at doing like a Bayonetta or Final yeah. Fantasy 16 mm. slow-mo dodge. I was like, oh, that's cool. But then, yeah, you go to the, the baking level next. I'm like, there's no combat here at all. Like, you're just doing these almost like mini games and stuff yeah. like that, which that one cake design where it was like a star that went in, that frustrated me. My brain like broke. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, Kirk. The only reason why I say like wait is because we don't know if there's going to be a mode where it is more platform heavy. And that's where you get to that point where like, oh, this mm. level is the one. Yeah. Um, I, I I see it as like Nintendo has their, their core first party, right? 2D or 3D Mario. And then they do, you know, there's Kirby, which is more of the all in all younger generation i need to play forgotten land i might i might really like i think that you'd game. like that a lot too yeah um that and that i gotta finish that game but um that's kind of how i came in looking at this it's like oh this is gonna be you know a first party more nintendo game that's mm -hmm. you know not a part of their core lineup um it's probably gonna be somewhere in between like kirby star allies and yoshi's crafted world um and i'm getting the sense because it's different in ways people are going to be more receptive to it like yoshi's crafted world is is very much like a it's just like an easier mario game right it's in that art style yeah and direction. but even still like i think the gameplay of that was was so mario adjacent that it didn't really get me yeah and um something that like really kind of showed me like maybe i really love mario i just don't love mario games is when i played that uh uh not sparks of hope mario 
Rabbids. Oh, Kingdom Rabbids, yeah, the, from yeah. from Ubisoft, and I was like, I, game, I, yeah. I was like, dude, I love this. Like, I, like that thing yeah, was yeah, like yeah. that thing was like drugs, dude. Like, I was like, I freaking love this game, man. Like, it, like it, because it was the world and the and the charm of Mario, but it was like given to me in a way that was so much more palatable when it just. It's so strange, right? Like I can beat Liza P every way to Sunday and 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 Sekiro and Dark Souls 3 and all those other difficult games, right? But then, you know, put put a Mario platformer in front of me and I'm like it's more that I'm just like not having fun. Like it like I don't have I'm having fun in the world, but I'm not having fun with the gameplay that that I'm engaging with. And 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 I I beaten the original Mario. I I got a uh, a uh, a uh, 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 considerable way through uh the the 3d world and you know so i i i know what they are and like they're cool i just wish i liked them more like yeah. i i like them like as games like i really like engaging with the characters in the world but playing it just doesn't feel so so fun and fulfilling in the way that people really seem to look at these games and so I was planning on Wonder kind of being the one where I'm like, no, I'm going to make it work. Like, I'm going to love it. I'm going to love Mario. And it's like, now that this game is coming out, I'm like, maybe I don't have to do that. Like, maybe mm -hmm. this is like an alternative experience. I'm excited for uh, RPG as well. I, I need That's to go and play one. that one. And, and yeah. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I think maybe those are like going to be the Nintendo games that I'm really going to love. I, I like the Pikmin games, you know, because that's different. That's doing its own thing. So yeah, I this one it's like it's it's hard for me with it being only sixty bucks. You know, in a world where everything is is seventy now, I think if this was fifty, it, it'd be no question. I'd go pick this up. But yeah. it, it, I think the only thing that is like hindering me is like that it is that it is sixty, which is good. It's not seventy, but like it, like baby game is baby game. You know, like it's like, but it's so fun. Like it's it yeah. really is fun. I just feel weird as like a thirty year old adult, mm. like making cakes, oh, yeah. like pastries and stuff. It's but it's fun. It's so charming and like the the music and everything is so good. Like I said, the, this whole this whole level with the the baking and everything feels like you're in like Ratatouille or something. Like with the the music yeah. playing and and everybody's dancing and everything. I mean, I don't know. It's just like goofy and wholesome and. It, it speaks to your inner child, I think. And, and you know, if, if you have kids or, or if you are a kid, you know, it's going to gonna speak to you. It's going to be a wholesome game uh, yeah. for, for younger folks. And I, I just think, like, how could you not like this game, basically? <laughs> this is the cake that gave me trouble, by the way, right here. I was, I was like, wait, what, what's the design I got to do? Yeah, um, a bit more complex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I to your point about price, I feel like Nintendo's what charged $70 for Tears of the Kingdom, and they were very yeah. adamant, like, we're gonna charge you $70 for a game when we feel like there's $70 worth of a game. And yeah. I, I feel like for the most part, you know, people can get on Nintendo for their premium, you know, they don't they don't devalue their games, which is good business, but at the other hand of it, they <laughs> typically give you good games. And I I I see why it's probably priced that way. Um I it probably could be a steep thing, but I, I do think this game's going to do really well. Here's here's like, I think currently the switch right now in 2024, we have this, we have that thousand year door remake, which is I think May or June. Mm -hmm. Didn't they finally give us the announcement for that. Um, Cause Luigi's mansion Two remake is in June. So I think thousand year door is sometime before that mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, dealing with a lot of re-releases and i'm i'm just so curious about like because what are they going to do end of year to also booster the library is there going to be any new original content you know is is this stuff really going to move more units this game maybe not but it's still going to sell well um i i guess my whole thing is is like i'm glad princess peach is getting a game i just want another wario game like another mainline oh. wario land or okay. like wario speaks to me as an italian i love mario <laughs> But as an Italian who loves garlic and struggles with gluttony, <laughs> Wario is just like, hey, I'm represented. Like, the this real is, Italian. You this know, is, like, this yeah. Is, yeah, he probably gambles. He smokes. He might be involved in organized crime. We don't know. Mm. He's like the yeah. he's like the Tony Soprano of the Mario universe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. yeah. So I mean, I just think that's an IP that they're, they're missing out on Wario and Waluigi Brothers or something like that because people really want a Waluigi game. And I'm like, you pair them up, you got something special there too. But yeah, I mean. This is going to be a fun game. 
it's not going to be a game changer, but you're going to have a lot of fun. There's probably going to be replayability, like the collectible things you get. Like if you do every yeah. activity you can in each level was kind of fun. It got me engaged right away. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about it. I'm, I'm look, I'll play through it. Um, Kirk, you'll have to get back to me after you beat the game. If like you stand by what you say, like this is the best. Oh, yeah, the best Nintendo. Uh, first yeah, game. and I think I think that's in large part just you know because of because I just it's tough to have time to to play Nintendo games in a world where you know I have the two other consoles and I have Game, game Pass. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have been on more of a, a a Nintendo Switch kick recently with uh with Prince of Persia coming out and and I was He's getting codes there. for that. Thank thank you to Ubisoft and uh getting a code for Inculinati and then Bellatro. Obviously, I had to pick that up on Switch because I'm not a Steam Deck guy, so that's that's where I was gonna play it. So, uh, yeah, I've been been kind of getting real real comfortable with the Switch. I just got the uh the cracked uh Nitro Deck thing. Great. Uh, that makes it really great to play. Yeah, so I I'm I'm very oh. high on on playing Switch there games right now. So, um, I I think. Like if I if it just feels like if I was if I was gonna do it like now would be the time to really start playing some of these games. Um, and this one's coming out like right now. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I I I don't know. I mean, uh, I definitely need to go and and play uh, Forgotten Land. I don't know if I own Forgotten Land actually. If if it's ever been on sale in the eShop, I've definitely bought it. But uh, I I need to play. Might Does any Nintendo for sure. first party game go on sale in the eShop? <laughs> Yes. It's very Yeah, they do. Really? Yeah, uh, oh, wow. uh and yeah, uh, Superstars is on sale like right now. I think today's the last day. Mario Party Superstars. Oh, wow. okay. uh, That's but yeah, no, the the Crafted Worlds on sale right now too. It, it, they yeah. they got to be out there for a little bit. Like yeah, I grabbed the uh, sure. Breath of the Wild for for 40, but that was like, you know, 3 or 4 years on. So yes. Yeah. Uh, most people get physical. I I have my whole whole Switch collection digital because I figure with the portable thing, like I just want it on the thing, you know, that I'm mm -hmm. carrying around. I don't want to carry around a bunch of little cartridges, like if I go on a flight or something. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough finding deals on uh on the eShop for first party games, but I'm pretty vigilant in that regard. But yeah, that that sort of that's that's another thing too. Is like Rise of the Ronin will be thirty dollars eventually. Princess oh, yeah. Peach digitally will never be sure. thirty dollars. So yeah, yeah, exactly. you can uh, wait. yeah. What yeah. what are, what are your thoughts, Ken? Are, are you are you picking this one up? Yeah. So um like it it kind of feels like i don't know why it like there hasn't been a full-blown princess peach game to this point i know you said there was a one earlier on it it seems weird that she's always been kind of as you said like the, the basically the premise of every mario game somehow bowser gets her again uh you know jesus maybe she needs to be like locked up or something or you know because they do a pretty bad job of keeping her safe uh but yeah like i think as you said this is like the charm and the gameplay like because a lot of the mario games especially kind of the party ones kind of have all these mini games so it's kind of like what if we had that but princess peach is you kind of mm -hmm. put them into a princess peach game as well so yeah i think this looks really good and i feel that I, I just feel that with the kind of life cycle of the switch coming to an end and the switch to room to be next year this feels like the the last big game in terms of like there as you said there's going to be kind of remasters or re-releases but this feels like the kind of one big one for this year that they're like, well, you know, at least we have this kind of, you know, uh, first party in the Mario universe and that they'll just hang their hat on, you know, other stuff in terms of its remasters of all their games, you know, yeah. th th the end of the year. Um, but yeah, like, again, I, I got Odyssey last year. And Such a good game. It's a really it's a really fun game. Really enjoyed it. I didn't get the game of the year hype uh, from my point of view. I thought it was cool, okay. but. I felt the, the going up against seat. Zelda in particular. Is that what you mean? No, just in general, like compared uh, to the so many great games that was out last year. I just I felt the the Wonder Seed got a bit gimmicky after a while, where it's like, oh, what's it going to do now? The map is going to turn upside down. Like, like the first few times is like, oh, this is cool. Like, oh, you're I'm talking just... about Wonder? I, th yeah, I thought you said, said Odyssey. He, yeah. Did I say Odyssey or what did I you say? Did, yeah, yeah. You're, you're talking about you're talking Sorry, about Wonder. I meant, meant Wonder, yeah. I am um, wonder like I enjoyed, but I felt that wonder was, uh, as I said, that got a bit gimmicky after a while with the, uh, the, the flower or whatever it is, where it kind of changes up the level. Um, it was still a good game. Um, you know, but a lot of people, I suppose, like the direction they're going with 2D Mario, 2D Mario and stuff like that. So this looks like, as you said, a bit more of an accessible game where, and I think it's, it's actually quite, that's why I'm surprised like this, there's actually a huge, um, 
uh, part of the Switch, um, people have Switch is like female uh, contingents. So yeah. a lot of people played Animal Crossing when that was yeah. huge. You know, that draw that got in people all different ages, demographics. Um, it's okay so if this... you're a guy and you play Animal Crossing. I'm just saying. I mean, well, no, you know, of course. That's what it means. Nothing, like every... nothing wrong with that. I played, uh, played quite a few hours Animal myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> But everyone was playing Animal Crossing uh, when it came out. And, you know, obviously it was COVID and everything. But this seems like a no-brainer to get in a more female audience. As you said, you don't even have to be a kid to be like, oh, well, it's cool to play as a badass, uh, you know, as you, as you see here with her saber or so. I think it's it's in that point of view. I think it's a smart move because it's kind of almost a, an untapped female um, player base that they haven't really touched touched on um, Nintendo. So, well, Peach, like like move. like uh, Mark said, Peach had her last game like back in the DS era, and that's yeah, like the only fire. one. Yeah. You know, she's only been a guest character, or like a, a co op yeah. character, um, in in other Mario games. So, I mean, it's it's about damn time, right, for her to get her yeah, own game. Exactly. And, I love exactly. that they gave it sort of the treatment of like it's not just a Mario game, but it's Peach, you know. Yeah. Exactly, and it's completely. And it's also not thing. like it doesn't feel like a, just like a little spin off. Like it feels like no, this is like a first party Peach game, a first party Nintendo Peach game that they're going to put in all the bells and whistles that we know and kind of the as you said the charm and all the different kind of mini games that you expect. It's not just like a little DLC or spin off for something else. It's like her own game, which means it's going to have. Like her own kind of like as you're you're used to the diff what what a Mario 3D game is what a Mario 2D game is and same with Luigi's Mansion this is going to be her own style of game as well which is cool so yeah it looks yeah. really good I love I, how much effort they put into that of like giving it its totally own thing of yeah. like yep. it is the whole theater thing and and all these different like the var the variants too like the variety of like you are doing this this action combat that's almost like you know baby version of bayonetta or devil may cry or something um yeah. if you can even really call it that like it, it's pretty bare bones and then like all of a sudden you're Very like simple. baking cakes and like put you know squirt icing out onto the top uh yeah and, and it's like you know the other stuff looks very cool too like you're almost like a phantom thief like persona like uh Sonic sly five, cooper yeah. type character like mm -hmm. like swinging through the 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 rooftops like in the night or whatever i guess you're gonna like steal something or whatever like it just looks very cool like did any of you play you uh have. Puppeteer, uh, it was the PlayStation mm -hmm. game. But no, I heard Studio. you say that at the beginning, but I looked it up. Yes, it, yeah, so I never played it though. It's it's really good, and you can you can definitely see this. They took a lot of influence from that game because again, that game is set on a stage, and the same thing. The spotlight follows the character around, and you're basically you're you have a scissors, and so as you cut stuff, uh, it kind of changes the world in the game. So I think it's they it's a smart way to set up the game because again, it, it's a bit different, and you know you can kind of you can probably do smart things with with it being like you know a play as such. You know you can kind of play play on that element. So uh, yeah, it's it's cool to kind of because Puppeteer was a very unique game, and it's kind of interesting that we there was no other game that really took that same influence. So it's good to see that Nintendo kind of yeah. said. How about we set it on the stage as well because it's a cool dynamic for a game it reminds me of um like i'm sure many know this but like super mario brothers 3 a lot of the times people were wondering like is this supposed to be like a stage play and i feel like there's been confirmation later on that like that is actually supposed to be a stage play because if you think about even the beginning of that game there's like people talking then they hush the curtain pulls up and all yes. that too yeah so they're yeah, yeah. And I think all the characters bow at the end as well. So like there's there is a tradition of Nintendo playing with that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's this is different, right? They're really taking advantage of it and giving yes. you different game formats. And I imagine we'll see more of these, right? Just because they're using, I mean, they already announced the next Mario movie. Peach was much more of a prominent, stronger character in that. Nice um, movie. They're going to do a lot of, they're going to take advantage of that as much as possible as that IP. Oh, and people love us. Toad. You know, they love Keegan. Yes. Key uh, voicing uh, Toad. And, and yeah. I always not like Toad, let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and there's people that love Wario. I'm, I'm in that camp as well. So would love to see more use of those those characters. I mean, even a Yoshi game that isn't just like, you know, in the crafted or woolly world model would be very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, so they've shown they could do it like with Kirby, you know, completely evolving what they what type of game they're going to do with that character. That was really cool to see. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what they do with 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 their first party IP characters. But yeah, I, I, I think people are kind of sleeping on, you know, every everybody sort of gushed over sure. how last year was like the perfect send off, like the best the best last year that the switch could have had. Like they're not done. Like that, yeah. I mean, it's it's been a good year for for Switch so far. Like we're getting yeah. 
thousand year door we're getting this game um you know obviously prince of persia is not you know a, a switch only game by any means but like it it's, it's perfect yeah, for switch. it's a switch Absolutely. game you know what i'm saying oh, like it's a switch game yeah. it's 60 it fps on switch that's it that's all you need to know they optimized that thing for switch they knew where they were selling that yeah. thing yeah uh that that's, that game coming out when it did made the first like three weeks of the newborn so nice because like i'm like all right i could do very little i have to be here is he breathing is everything okay but i could just mm -hmm. have my prince of persia on my switch whenever he took a nap and i was just like this is perfect that was speaking, such a good speaking of which to to round out well it's glitching to round out uh <laughs> the, our, our second hour oh is it glitching it's, uh, it's, yeah. it does it when it's 4k yeah it's oh no it and won't FPS. do it when it's it won't do it when it's 4K. So Tales of Kinzara Zao, which yeah. is the sort of the next big game that's coming, the next big blockbuster game um that is coming after this this sort of Arma game then that we have. It's coming on April 23rd. It very much looks like it's in the same vein as Prince of Persia, uh mm -hmm. The Lost Crown. And uh everything that we've seen of it looks really, really cool. Uh, we saw some of it at the Xbox uh, partner preview. I wish I could could show gameplay of it. All we got is screenshots here, unfortunately. But um, yeah, uh, this looks like it's it's again, it's it's not that these games aren't our first party Switch, but it's like they're gonna sell a lot on Switch. So it's gonna yes. be a, it's gonna be a yeah. real big year for Switch in terms of of send off. Uh, are you guys excited for this game, especially coming out after Lost Crown? sort of sort of showed us like yeah baby like metroid dread style side scroller metroidvanias uh yeah. that are triple a in 2024 are where it's at and we're going to yeah. bring the thunder with those is this mm -hmm. one that you guys are excited for and are, are going to pick up absolutely it's my favorite genre metroidvania is my favorite genre so absolutely i'll probably not right away i'll wait on it but um if you tell me it's a metroidvania game my interest is already peaked for sure Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like so. What's interesting is the guy who I suppose the head of the studio who made this game voices Bayek in uh, Assassin's yeah. Creed Origins. So I was okay. a huge fan of Bayek's character, I thought he was great. Uh, and what I really liked about this is you know, he was talking about that he lost his father um, not too long ago, and even the, the way they presented it, they had like these uh, kind of sculptor, uh, sculpt sculptures, and they had like kind of tears, like, like a waterfall almost coming out of these sculptures, and like. I hope in a way it kind of it's a metroidvania but that has like a real heart and story to it. maybe something like celeste in that sense where celeste was like a platformer but it definitely had like a message to it it had a kind of a very important story to tell so i hope in a way it's like through this journey you go on that it kind of touches on grief in a way that is i'm sure that is uh, meaningful yeah. and impactful because i'm you know uh i love when a game has a great story or like kind of even touches on topics that are maybe not taboo but like aren't you know are difficult uh, subjects to kind of touch on or address so i if that's channeled through this game with the metroidvania style i think it's it's going to be an absolute winner so yeah this is a on my wish list because just even it looks so good like i love the yeah, the yeah dude the like the, the visual and, style yeah. these games are yeah, pushing from metroid yeah. dread to to lost crown to this now yeah. like they're just they're showing like a new evolution of this genre that that of where the heights it can hit. Like it's even bringing me in, a guy that you know really really doesn't love two uh, D side scrollers the way that some people really just uh, adore them. Mm -hmm. And I, like it's showing me like, hey, you can have a triple A experience with this type of game. Um, oh, yeah. Don't don't turn your nose up at it. It's not not all of them are pixel indies, you know. So yes, that's true. Uh, not that not I mean like a game like Bla that. Blasphemous. I think that's you know beautiful in its own in its own right. And and mm -hmm. what indie devs have been able to do with like those type of games. But yeah, like the stuff that's coming out, man. Now in in this particular genre, I mean it's it's got me wanting to switch OLED real bad. So uh, <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. I don't want to like make you spend money, but it's nice. It, and it, it looks great in that uh that crack case too. I'm just saying. You already got. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Really I'll get an I OLED. Like that actually. That's I'll really get an nice. OLED before I get a PS5 Pro. That's for sure. Uh, oh, I, yeah, yeah, I think I think I'm waiting on the the Switch to hullabaloo and people are going to be trying to offload their OLEDs. Yeah. Uh, That's what I did with sure. the Steam Deck actually, because remember Steam Deck got the OLED, mm -hmm. which reduced the price of the base model. So that's yeah. when I swooped in and got the Steam Deck. So I was like, aha, now is the time to get in. So Steam yeah. Deck's great. Steam Deck OLED is also very great too. So yes, yeah. But but anyway. 
Well, can, hate can have, to, kind of all have OLED. <laughs> hate to wrap it up here with our uh, all 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 day, maybe all time peak of 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 one forty viewers here. Thank you guys so much for being here in in the chat and in in the in the viewer group. Uh, hopefully, we put on a great show for you guys. We tried to cover all the games that everybody's talking about today, and uh, certainly with Ken's being here, giving you so much information on rise of the ronin and uh help you decide you know if that's a game for you i i'm certainly more intrigued just about the game in general like whether mm -hmm. i pick it up anytime soon or not like i really enjoyed listening to you talk about it um and and like all the the thoughts and impressions that you had to share so that was really cool if you didn't catch that make sure you go check out uh the video on the channel uh of us discussing that because that was probably one of the the best discussions that we had through the whole show and it was great to hear you guys you know be super hyped for for dragon's dogma too as well and uh of course everybody knows princess peach showtime best game coming out this week you know it's game of the, game of the year Ooh. so game of the, year. <laughs> game of the year yeah not quite i think uh if it if it at wealth might get that one but uh Hell actually yeah. Ur Ur shadow of the earth tree like let's be honest uh if that one counts well but, can it dlc no i don't i don't think hey DLC. hey it, uh uh phantom liberty got nominated for stuff at the game awards so if they, yeah, if but they don't nominate shadow of the earth tree best. If they don't nominate Shadow of the Earth Tree, it's a little bit of a little bit of favoritism, <laughs> double standard stuff going well, it, on. Well, it can win best ongoing game, but it didn't get Cyberpunk didn't get nominated for like Game of the Year. Um, I I thought it I thought it got nominated for other no. stuff like like action or something. Okay, huh? Well, maybe interesting. For interesting. Yeah, I think yeah. well, I think Persona Five Royal got nominated for RPG one year, so we'll see. Well, that, we'll see if we'll one. see if that's Elden Ring can win Game of the Year twice. It'd be insane. <laughs> Uh, Kenneth, tell people where they can find you and uh, where your uh, your Rise of the Ronin review is going to be when the embargo is up. Sweet, yeah. So the review is will be out on the 21st. Um, so I think it's like 3 p.m. my time, but, you know, it's early enough over in the States. So, yeah, uh, breakingnews.e is where it'll be. I'll put it up on my Twitter so you can follow me on Twitter. I'll just get the proper name. So it's at KennyBoyFox92. Um, so yeah, I'll have my review up there, and as I say, I kind of have a little pin tweet, which is my uh, kind of preview impressions. If you if you're kind of wondering what the game's all about, so I'll have my full thoughts then uh, on the twenty first. So yeah, look out for my review. Thanks for uh, letting me on today, guys. Thanks. Absolutely, you were you were amazing, man. All right, uh, Mark, tell tell everybody where they can find you. How you're yeah. so recurringly late to the game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, right. You hear I'm a busy guy, right? Got uh, multiple jobs, family, all that stuff. So you can find me on late to the game at YouTube. The whole idea there is I'm playing games that came out a year or more, right? I just did a video on Final Fantasy VII Remake, kind of a retrospective asking, you know, is this game worth playing still, right? Obviously, should you play it before Rebirth? Yes. But talking to you about like, again, I'm partially game dev. So getting into their design Sweet. mindset, getting into the development history and the execution of that. Uh, currently working on a retrospective from Ghost of Tsushima, ironically. Oh, um, nice. I thought now was the perfect time since yeah. the PC port's coming out. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm loving it. Um, it's just such a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Um, but to your comments, Ken, on this Rise of the Ronin, like, there's enough you've said about it to where I'm like, these are different games, too, in a lot of ways yes, as well, which sure. has me excited. So you could find me at Late to the Game on youtube or twitch or just my full name on twitter mark liberto which i gave you a follow ken just now as thanks, well man. yeah so i uh, hope to see you people there um thanks for tuning in it's nice to always nice to be here kirk you know that it's always nice to have you mark and uh yeah my my twitter at's been on the screen like pretty much the whole time so yeah follow me on twitter <laughs> at warmer gray that's how kenneth and i connected so who knows uh, yeah I'd, if some of you guys are like creators or, or whatever out there i'd love to connect with you guys but yeah just follow me for you know terrible takes or i talk about games that nobody cares about occasionally uh, so that's <laughs> a good time i i stay uh stay defending skull and bones so that's pretty hilarious reforge <laughs> gives me a pretty hard time about that as do the guys on here but yeah, and the YouTube channel is What's New Video Games, where I try to give uh, my audience timely reviews of games that are coming out that people might be interested in. Haven't had the opportunity to to review a game in a little bit because it's it's tough out here with the review game trying to get codes. Uh, Kenneth is a little mm -hmm. more established than me, so he he has the end this time, which is why we wanted to have him on. But 
Uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to me over there because there will be a, a review video that I publish at some point that I put a lot of time and, and effort and work into. And uh, people seem to like it when I do that. So make sure you're subscribed over there so you don't miss that. But that's going to do it for us today on Epic Loot Radio. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we, we really appreciate the turnout. Like, this is crazy to get this many people live. I don't know. I don't know if these are, these are all your, your fellows, Kenny, but uh, th to thanks, me, lads. Uh, thanks lads for joining us. We really appreciate it. Give us, give us a sub, give uh give me a Marcus sub. We'd love to have you. You seem like uh good blokes over there. So, uh, but yes, thank you so much for, for joining us. And we really hope you, you enjoyed the show. We hope we, we, we gave you some good entertainment today and uh, yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to say, or are we going to play the outro boys? I'm all good. Play that intro, baby. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah.